Hey everybody, Robert Klein here. Uh, today I'm gonna to talk about a client of mine that actually called me last week and they're trying to figure out how much dividends they should pay themselves. So, here's the scenario. Their gross revenue is about $700,000. Their total expense is a half a million, which leaves them about 200 grand net income to work with. The, when they called me, they were planning to actually pay out about $80,000 worth of dividends. And that was sort of suggested by the accountant, and that's actually the correct way of doing it because you end up paying the, the you know, spouse one and spouse two $40,000 worth of dividends, and it actually, you almost, you almost pay nothing in tax when you do that. There's a certain calculation that they, they, they use to minimize the tax bill, and it's in that range. So that's correct. The only problem was, I asked this one question. I said, hey, look, are you, what are you planning to do with real estate this year? And they said, well, we're thinking of buying a $4.5 million commercial complex. I said, okay. First question, are you planning to have your business in it? Are you going to move your business from where it is into that building? And they said, yes. So it turns out they're looking at building a, or not building, buying a three floor building and they're going to rent the top, rent the middle floor and put their business inside of the bottom floor. So what's going to happen is the bank, in terms of a qualifying point of view, is going to take the rent from this floor, the rent from this floor, plus the corporate financials or the net income from the business. And they're gonna use that as the overall number to calculate what the maximum mortgage that they're gonna qualify for is. Now, how do you destroy business income? You pay it out as dividends. So what's gonna happen is the bank is gonna look at, if you, if you paid out the 80 grand, they're gonna say, okay, you're, from a corporate point of view, the company itself is not making 200 grand, it actually paid its owners out 80, that means we're only working with $120,000 towards the mortgage payment. So by, by paying out that 80 grand in dividend, they save a few grand in taxes, but what did they end up losing? $80,000 amortized at 20 years as a low amortization at 3.9%, they just lost $1.1 million worth of financing by trying to save a few thousand bucks on, on optimizing dividends. Now, where this becomes pretty important is because commercial lending has really two parts. One, a commercial or a, a commercial loan plus term loans can be added. So traditional traditional financing basically basically says that if you're buying commercial, as long as everything qualifies, you're looking at 25% down. But it's possible if your corporation is super strong to buy commercial at 15% down, 10% down, and even 0% down, depending on the strength of this company. So this is sort of, you know, a pretty, not a pretty, a, not a basic scenario, but uh, this is what you should be considering if you're incorporated and you want to buy commercial property and you start looking at the numbers and what they can really do. There's some nut stuff this client could do if they properly position their dividends or even don't pay that much out.